Assalamu alaikum. This is Pasha, the author of the Double Cross. I told you before that the, the Double Cross is a metaphor for all the different things that we've been through and all the things that they hid from us. I've decided to do this three-part series on the evolution of race because I believe that my prior sessions with you may have given some of you the impression that I am a racist because I've spoken about the white man and worshiping him as a god and a savior. But that is not the case. I'm not a racist, though I will say, if I were, I'd have every right to be. For some reason, I feel today that our people truly do not realize what has happened to us or how things have transformed us, mostly without our knowing. How could it not when our people were enslaved here for 500 years? in America. In 2023, not much has changed. We walk and drive by places every day where our ancestors were murdered and raped and lynched and bored in oil, whipped and beaten in unspeakable ways, and we don't even give it a thought. We feel nothing. We have been purposely been desensitized. We become unfeeling and selfish. You know what it took for a mother and father to watch their child auction off and taken away, never to be seen again. Or for a man or woman to see each other tied to a tree and whipped down to the white meat. And yet after all of this, the person responsible has the nerve to come around and teach you that he is your God. What? We should be just as outraged over this as I am. And if you are not, then what does that say about you? I'm not the bad guy. You are. Because total ignorance in a world of knowledge makes you worthless, hopeless. This is what the white man has done with his mechanisms and his systems. White lives have for, our, for over 500 years been held as more valuable than ours. And it still is today. The long-term effect has been that we place no value on our own lives either. I am Sunni Muslim. I follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad in the Holy Quran. I've done so since 1985. There is no racism in this deen, this belief, but there is right and wrong, and a abundance of common sense. Islam is a universal religion of submission to God only. We do not worship pictures, we do not bow down to statues, bunnies, or men. We are all teachers. This is the double cross. Picking up from where I left off last time, this is the last of the three-part series. The white man's main question for themselves after discovering the land of the sunburned people and their vastness of wealth, gold, silver, diamonds, rubies, pearls, their spices, their teas, fruits and vegetables, things the white man had never seen before, nor tasted, was where the hell have we been? And how do we take all of this from them? And what about the lions and rhinos and giraffes and monkeys and exotic birds, all of which the sunburned people had mastered? His power, his intelligence, his ability to rule and govern himself was self-evident. He was a man, he was a king. And yet, the whites wrote books and gave lectures on how the African was not even human. Wow, if as if this white nation's whole existence was predicated on convincing themselves at large, that the lies they were telling and passing down generation after generation were true. Can you say jealousy? Can you say envy? Next, they invented typologies and they stated physical characteristics of races did not change from one generation to the next. This expressed alongside existing lies and popular racial stereotypes strengthened the assumption that some races were pure, and some were not. You see where I'm going with this? Race was a calculated plan, 
a systematic thought out plan. Henry Barlena Villers published works or his works in 1720 and 1730. And he put forth the argument designed to justify the dominance of the aristocratic classes in place. He stated that the noble classes were originally German, Franks, that carried and preserved their superiority in their blood. In England, during the reign of King Henry VIII, politicians and philosophers decided to create a mythological identity for themselves, which they named Anglo-Saxon. You hear a lot about that name here in America. They wanted a myth, an image that rivaled all other great civilizations. Most of their descendants you will find today in Boston. The English desiring also a glorified ancestry latched onto the racial identity of the German tribes and their claims of superiority. Callicles, a Roman historian of the middle first century AD, published a book titled Germania, a study of the German tribes to the north of Rome. In the second century, his book will become the basis behind the theory of racial German superiority that dominated the Western world during the 19th and 20th centuries. And when I say Western world, I'm speaking of its leader, the United States. Did you know that hundreds, maybe thousands of German scientists after the defeat of Hitler were given new identities and sent to the United States by Prescott Bush and his CIA operatives? Yes, Prescott Bush, the ex-president of the United States grandfather. And it was these German scientists that created the biological arsenal kept by the United States today. Did you know also that these same German scientists that worked for Hitler were smuggled into the United States with help from the president on down, created the two nuclear bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, J.P. Morgan, the DuPonts, Lehman Brothers, the Onassis, Goldman Sachs, Con Laws, and the Stanleys are all Ashkenazim, Germans. Did you know that all the major brewers of your favorite beers and wines are also Ashkenazim, Germans, and so much more? The Nazis hide in plain sight here in America with their white supremacy on display for all to see. They created the banking system in this country, the Federal Reserve, along with the fake interest rate systems. They are Citicorp, Wells Fargo, Bank One. They are Trump, Bill Gates, the Murdoch Group. All of these people identified with their German heritage, heritage, excuse me, including the Lion Clintons. All of them believe in European biological superiority. It's why Bill and Hillary both laughed and made jokes about Obama's chances of becoming the president. Do you remember that? They thought that was funny. Which is also why there has never been a black, brown, red, or yellow CIA or FBI director. As for the presidency, Obama's mother and grandparents were Europeans. They are Irish Germans. Joseph Gabonau was the most important promoter of racial ideology in Europe during the 19th century. He published his essays in 1853 and 55 titled The Inequality of Human Races. Borrowing from American racist Samuel Morton, Gabbard now claimed that civilizations established by three major races of the earth, i.e. the white, the black, and the yellow, were all produced by the white race and that no civilization could emerge without the white's cooperation. 
He finished by stating, the purest of the white races were the aliens. And when they diluted their blood by intermarrying with lower races, they helped bring about the decline of civilization. Right. Do you not see how truly ignorant and as backwards these busters are that were held up as the best and the brightest among Europeans? I mean, he said this, this is ridiculous. But he was held up and lauded by Europeans as a great thinker. Okay, first of all, any fool knows that white cannot create a black, a brown, a red, or a yellow. That's common sense. White can only create another white if, if they can procreate with another white. Otherwise, the child is whatever the mother or father's nation is. If you are foolish enough to believe that Moses was white and lived among a palace full of blacks as a Hebrew and no one know, knew, and you watch that BS every December on TV called Moses and believe it, you are lost cause. Like those five black house niggas, police, that beat our young brother Tyree to death in Memphis, Tennessee on January the 7th. No weapon, no drugs. Just a repeated question from our brother, why are you doing this? And screams his mother. Sadly, these house niggas don't even know why they did what they did. They don't even know the source of their hatred. The mother of Moses' children were Egyptians. This would mean if Moses was white, that his children were Egyptian, like their mother required. The name Aryans, like everything else, was stolen by Europeans. Aryans originate in the mountains of Iran, not in Germany. The white man's genes are recessive. This is why he can only procreate with a white woman. When his woman, the white woman, gets pregnant by a black man, she gives birth to a black child, not a white one. So, white blood is not diluted, it's dominated by the blacks. Foolish racist Americans were among Gabonau's greatest admirers. They seen in his works a formula for unification with the Germans on the ideal of superiority and became activists or organizers of political societies to advance purity. And they cloaked the Nazi agenda as the super race. Ultimately, the Germans' interpretation of race and themselves as a super race gave way to their belief that they had the right to enslave and eliminate inferior races. Herbert Spencer, a writer, introduced in 1869 the idea of the survival of the fittest and advocate government and advocated that the government do away with policies that help the poor. Now, back in 1981 here in America, we called this policy Reaganomics. Now it's the standard white Republican policy. Spencer was against all charities, child labor laws, women's rights, and education for the poor or uncivilized. He preached that such actions, that such actions interfered with the laws of natural evolution and became known as social Darwinism. So now you understand why blacks and browns in America and abroad are kept poor to include many parts of Africa today, the richest continent in the world. You see why slums and projects are created and maintained to this very day. They kill people, and not just the for the U.S. Supreme Court decision, Palsy versus Ferguson, where the court, the Supreme Court, stated that a black man has no rights that a white man is bound to respect. And don't forget that the Constitution of the United States states that blacks only have one-fifth of a brain. 
and do amendments to the Constitution are allowed. This has not been changed along with how whites in America view us. This is the double cross. This completes the three-part series. If anyone has any questions regarding the series or race, you can contact me at Pasha Davenport, 232-755, PO Box 8107, Mansfield, Ohio, 44903. Assalamu alaikum.